epithelial tissue continued. I doubt we're going to finish the entire lesson during this lesson. Uh, we will likely have to finish epithelial tissue tomorrow, and then we'll get right into connective tissue, okay? All right. So, <clears throat> a quick recap of yesterday. When you breathe in, what gas do we inhale? When you exhale, what gas is being released? So we inhale carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The carbon dioxide goes past our pharynx, past our larynx, down our trachea, into our bronchi, into our lungs, to a type of structure known as an alveoli. It's known as an air sac. The air sacs are some of the thinnest tissue in your entire body. So would that tell you that it is simple or it is stratified? Simple. Would the fact that me telling you that it's some of the thinnest tissue entire body would suggest that it is columnar, cuboidal, or squamous? Right, that's exactly it. Your air sacs are made of squam uh, simple squamous epithelium. These cells have to be so thin that oxygen must be able to diffuse through them to your blood, and CO2 must be able to be able to diffuse from your blood into your air sacs so you can go, Every time you exhale, that CO2 that your cells made, that your body's trying to get rid of. So nearly all substances that we um, are passing throughout our body have to go through this coating tissue, this epithelial tissue. It's getting close to Halloween. Got a lot of horror movies coming out. You guys ever heard of the Halloween movie series? It's actually called Halloween with Mike Myers, the guy with the knife. Um, imagine Mike Myers is coming in your house and you're hiding in your blanket. He knows you're in your blanket, but you're completely wrapped up like a, like a hot dog in a blanket. He has to cut through the blanket to get to you. That blanket of yours is your epithelial tissue. It's covering you. That's what it does, amongst a few other things, but namely, it covers, it surrounds. That's what the word epithelial means, covering or on top of. In order for him to get to you, he has to go through that blanket. So whether it's Mike Myers or whether it's oxygen, nearly all substances... received or expelled by the body must pass through epithelial tissue. If you want to get a second degree burn, you got to go through the first layer first first degree burn first layer of skin that's your epithelial layer second degree burn is your dermis your connective tissue you have to get to the epithelial first before you can get to the connective tissue if you want to get a vaccine or get blood drawn they have to go through your epithelial label layer first in order to get to your blood vessels so it's always about coding. Now, here's something that we did do yesterday. I'd like to see if you can actually recite what some of these are. There are one, two, three, four, five, six purposes for epithelial tissue. Now, it doesn't matter to me what order we do them in. I'd just like for all of you to be six for six. Can you tell me any of the functions that you may recall from yesterday for epithelial tissue? No? Absorption. This would be more specific to your digestive system. Specifically, your small intestine. What's another one, Sam? Filtration. Filtration. Like your kidneys, which is part of your urinary system. Also known as excretory. Two down, four to go. Sensory reception, What's which, one, which system is that? your nervous system three down three to go halfway there excretion that's also going to be in the urinary system two more protection. protection this is the toughest system name to remember do you remember what that is integumentary 
That's going to be our next unit, by the way. And the last one, it kind of rhymes with excretion. Lily, secretion. This is going to be your, um, your endocrine system for the most part. All right, now what we're going to do for the rest of this lesson and continuing into tomorrow are the different types of epithelial tissue and uh, where they're found and what their function is. Okay, so what I would like you all to do is I want you to take an anatomy book that's on your de uh, table. You don't need to open both of them for both of you, just one per student will be fine. Now, I want you to begin on page 119. 119. If you're watching this lesson at home, also open up your textbook to page 119, 119. Okay. So what we're gonna do for the rest of this lesson is types of epithelial tissue. Function and location. Let's start with the thinnest one out of them all. Simple squamous epithelium. This is on page 119 if you want to get a good look at it. The image depicted on page 119, if you guys can look, those lavender areas are open pockets. That is an air sac. And those dark purple lines, that is the actual tissue. It is very, very very thin it has to be so thin that oxygen and co2 carbon dioxide must be able to pass through them yes yeah you, oh yeah yeah it's it guys it's so thin and by the way you know how i'm all about don't vape and everything this tissue is what vaping incinerates and it's the barrier between your blood and your lungs. When you smoke cigarettes, all that crap, there's more than 4,000 chemicals in cigarettes. All that crap that builds up in your lungs, the tar, the thick, goopy, bleh, it builds up on those air sacs and oxygen can't pass through. So don't be doing things to your lungs that's going to put them in a bad position. This tissue, as you can see, is very, very delicate. And things that some people do to their lungs is just self-sabotage as I view it. So this tissue is very thin. I mean, it's as thin as it gets. It's so thin because substances must be able to diffuse right through it. Specifically, oxygen going in and carbon dioxide going out. Your cells produce CO2. You have to get rid of it. If you don't, it actually makes your blood acidic, which is dangerous. So you have to exhale it. You need to get oxygen into your system and get rid of the CO2. Now, as far as uh, location. Well, it's found in your kidneys. It's found in your alveoli, there it is, your air sacs, in your lungs, this, the place where gases are exchanged. If you were to shrink like Ant-Man and you were to travel into your lungs, the alveoli would be the end of the road. It's where your lungs meet your blood vessels. Uh, the lining of your heart. That's called your pericardium, your blood vessels, 
your lymphatic vessels, if you've ever gotten a massage before, there's a type of massage called the lymphatic massage where it drains your tissues of fluid. Your lymphatic vessels drain your tissues of extra fluid that might build up. And if you remember way back in the second week of school, your first test, I gave you the answer to number 39 because I didn't teach it to you. Here it is. Your serose. This is the lining of body cavities. Cavities like your thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity, cranial, vertebral, pelvic cavity. The lining of those cavities is known as your serose. That's going to be simple squamous epithelium. Very, 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 very thin. If you were to actually draw it, and I would prefer you look at the actual image on page 119, you're going to turn the page in a moment, it'll look like this. Like super, super thin. We got to draw a little nucleus in there. There we go. Okay. Are there any further questions, comments, curiosities about simple squamous epithelium? Okay. Let's move on to number two. Simple cuboidal epithelium. And the first name tells you how many layers. The second name tells you what the type of cell. Simple cuboidal epithelium is mainly meant for excretion and absorption, or excuse me, secretion and absorption. The reason I included glands here, this is gonna be really important for you all. The majority of your glands, like your thyroid, your pituitary, your pancreas, ladies, your ovaries, they have cuboidal cells. It's a layer of cuboidal cells, which is one layer that would be simple cuboidal epithelium. Most of your glands are composed of this type of tissue. They secrete chemicals. They secrete things like hormones or uh, sweat or oil out of your, your face when you get a zit. Location. We have kidney tubules, which are like the filters of your kidneys. Uh, we have other ducts and secretory portions of small glands. If you're like, secretory like what my mom has at her office? No, not a secretary. Secretory, which is secreting, actual secretions. And lastly, as I said a moment ago, the surface of ovaries. Ladies, your ovaries produce egg cells for reproduction, but they also produce a lot of your hormones. What do you call it when a woman no longer has egg cells? Menopause. Menopause. Well, there's a major hormonal change. We all know that egg cells come from ovaries, but a lot of feminine hormones come from ovaries too. Estrogen, progesterone, things like that, they come from those glands. So your ovaries are actually, they can be considered reproductive organs, but they can also be glands because they secrete into your bloodstream. Okay, if you were to actually try to draw them, I want you to turn the page to page 120. Take a look at the layer of cuboidal Simple cuboidal epithelium. If you were to actually look at them, they'll look a little something like this. Simple cuboidal epithelium. There you go. There's a picture of on the top of page 120. Whoops. Come on back. Screen just went black. One second. Should come back. There we go. All right, number three. Simple columnar epithelium. This may be the last one we have time for and we only have about four minutes left in class.
The function of these cells, well, it really depends. Are they ciliated or not? We have absorption and secretion of mucus. When I say mucus, it's basically what it sounds like, just lubricating slime, snot, stuff like that, of mucus and enzymes. Now, some columnar cells are ciliated, and this is on the bottom of page 120. Some are not ciliated. Remember that cilia are like our little hair like projections. I'll try to draw it at the end of this. As far as location, that really depends. Are they ciliated or not? So we have the ciliated, and we're going to have the non ciliated. If you have columnar cells that are actually ciliated, you're going to mainly find them in the fallopian tubes. You're going to find them in your throat where you, it, when we breathe in air, guys, there's a lot of particulates in our air. There's pollen, there's dust, there's dog hair, there's cat hair, there's other people's germs and the cilia can actually trap it. So one of the locations here is going to be the upper respiratory tract. Non ciliated is going to be the males, sperm carrying ducts. And if I were to draw this for you, here we go. Well, hold on, this is ciliated. Should look like this. There's a picture of this on the bottom of page 120. If it is not ciliated, it's just gonna look like this. We are going to stop here and we'll finish this off tomorrow with the other ones I didn't get to.